Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A special welcome to all those visiting with us. We're happy to have you here and everyone who is joining us online in worship. Welcome. You'll find some announcements in the front of your bulletin. Uh, Next Sunday, we will be having a healing service during worship. Uh, Also next Sunday, At 6 p.m. will be the community worship service to help kick off the carnival. Um, So that'll be next Sunday at 6 p.m. over at Fayette uh, Park. And um, there will be an ice cream social afterwards. Are you okay with ice cream, Dot? You got all your ice cream? All right. Awesome. Yes, thank you everyone who's donating ice cream for that. We hope you can be there. If you want to bring your own chairs, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, we're looking to the fall, and so we will um, be looking to start up some things, especially confirmation. Uh, if you are, it's usually like middle school to high school, if you're interested, if you have a youth that's interested in being part of confirmation, please let me know. Uh, we'll also be needing some mentors for our confirmands, and so if that's something you'd be interested, please also let me know that. Are there other announcements? Sounds good. All right, so yeah, we need pie makers for the carnival, which starts August 1st. So Tuesday, August 1st at 6 a.m. here. Is that 6 a.m. then every day that week? Okay, so if you'd like to come and help make pies, it would be greatly appreciated. So yeah, thank you to the willing workers for doing that, putting all that hard work in. Thank you. Any other announcements? Joys, concerns? All right. Please rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. first lesson is from the 44th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Read the psalm responsively. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your handmaid. 
Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Second reading is from the eighth chapter of Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may glorify, also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager, longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first spirits of first, first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we will wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. All of the children are invited forward for our children's message. Good morning. How are you? I like your polka dot dress. It's awesome. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so this morning we're going to be hearing more uh, from Jesus about sowing seeds. And today we're going to hear about how weeds and the plants are planted together. And so they grow up together. And instead of pulling out the weeds, which is probably what you would normally do, you like to weed your garden, um, the story goes that you want to keep the weeds in there because you don't want to pull out the good plants in the process of pulling out the weeds. So I thought we could do a fun activity where we try to figure out if a plant is a flower or if it's a weed. So any of you expert, experts in plants? OK, you ready? We're going to try. How about this first one here? What do you think? Is it a flower or is it a weed? Flower? What do you think? Yeah? Flower? So uh, this is actually Queen Anne's lace. And actually, that's considered a weed. So it grows up on the side of the roads. What about this one? Flower. What do you think? Flower? Yeah, you're right. That's a spider flower. So yeah, it, it's definitely a flower. It grows in people's gardens. People plant them. OK, how about this one? A weed? Yeah. Wow, you're getting good at this. Yep, that's a weed. That's a star of Bethlehem. Yeah, and it's considered a weed. How about this one? What do you think? Flower? Wow, good job. Yeah, that's a violet. Very good. So honestly, you know what the difference you know, between weeds and flowers is? Is that a weed is just a plant that grows where you don't want it to. So that's kind of the thing I've noticed, is that sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between a flower and a weed. 
And so what um, Jesus tells us in the story is today is to not worry about so much about determining what's a flower and what's a weed, but to let them grow up together and then let God decide. And so um, when you're looking, I just want you to take some time maybe through the week if you see any flowers growing, you know, just to appreciate the beauty, even if they're considered weeds, that there's the beauty in them still. So will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you so much for the beauty of your creation around us. We ask that you would help us to grow healthy and strong in your love, that you would watch over and protect us and protect all of your good creation. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, Then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So this Sunday, we continue our series on sowing seeds, and we hear more from Jesus, who doesn't seem to be a very good gardener, a very good farmer, and this seems to continue his track of not being a very good gardener, and it starts off well enough with the master sowing seeds, and then an enemy comes and sows weeds into the midst of the good seed. And no one knew for a while what had happened until the plants became, began to grow and bear grain and it became obvious that something had gone wrong. The slaves of the master asked if they should start pulling up the weeds and the master replies, no. If you pull up the weeds, the wheat will come up with it and both will be destroyed. And 
there again is where I start to wonder about this master, namely God, about what God is talking about. I know if we leave weeds in a garden that they will take up the nutrients that the flowers and the fruits and the vegetables need to grow and to prosper. And the things that I intended to grow might die. And at the very least, it wouldn't look very nice. So what is God up to in this parable if it's not to tell us how to properly grow food? I think God is having us take a hard and honest look at the wheats, the wheat and the weeds in our lives. And according to the parable, they must grow together. And if we attempt to pluck them out, they will destroy the other. Now, so often, again, this parable is used to generalize people or groups of people into wheat or weeds, good or bad, and us versus them. And the assumption always tends to be that we are the wheat and that other people, whether they have wronged us or whether they think differently than us, are the weeds. But when we reduce the way we view the world like this, we start to lose the ability to work together to do the mission of God, and we lose the ability to see God's beloved in each other. And it is rampant in our world today, in politics, Republicans and Democrats, liberals versus conservatives, and these distinctions end up overshadowing our shared desire for the common good to succeed. And the distinctions end up resulting in conflict and gridlock and even violence and hatred. But Jesus tells us today that the destruction of one can lead to the demise of others, of the other. And isn't that true? When you demonize the other, you end up uprooting the good in yourself. Whether it's believers versus non-believers, sinners versus saints, any attempt to pit people against each other into two groups is really not useful or helpful or worthwhile. Because we are in this world together. We are in this country together. And we are in this community together. We are in this congregation together. So we grow together and allow God to do the separating in God's own time. Let the gardener, let the farmer be the judge and not us. We need each other to survive. Whether we like it or not, we are in relationship with people who are very different from us. And Jesus tells us to love our enemies to love those different from us. And this love that Jesus speaks of is not romantic as much as it's practical. Because when we respond to our enemies with hatred and violence, we are no better than the weeds in which we claim to be uprooting. There may be times that we need to respond to those who hurt us by distancing ourselves from them, but ultimately our Faith is one of compassion and forgiveness. And we cannot let hatred or anger or fear towards others determine our character and actions. So instead of thinking of the people in your life who are the weeds, think about the weeds in yourself. What are the biggest weeds in your life? What threatens to steal the nutrients from the good that God has given you. Maybe it's stress or busyness, pressure, money, ambition, competition, desires. These are weeds that can rise up and choke the life that God gifts us from us. And after you've considered the weeds what we have to realize is that we are unable to get rid of the weeds on our own. And that is where God can come in 
And God is the gardener that helps rid us of the weeds within us while letting the good seed in us grow. So we wait expectantly for God to prune in his own good time. And we learn from both the good seed and the weeds in our life. We recognize how they manage to live together and that they cannot live separated from each other. We recognize the good and the bad in each of us, and by doing so, we start to see all people in their complexity and not just generalizations. We start to see people in their brokenness, in the beauty that God intended in them and for us. And most importantly, we acknowledge the absolute need we have for God, who is the only one who can reap and harvest both the good and the bad in us all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know us better than we know ourselves. We ask you to search us to help us see the weeds in our life, the things that are taking away the life that you give us. But Lord, we also ask to see the good, the wheat that you have grown in us. Please help us to rid ourselves of the wheat, the weeds so that the goodness that you have planted in us can grow and flourish and can be shared with those around us and the whole world. We pray this all in your holy name. Amen.
join me in saying the words of our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayer for the church, those in need, and all of creation. O oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth, both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit, bearing witness among us. Hear us, O oh God. You brought forth all creation and called it good. Direct policymakers to protect lands and seas. Bring rain to sun parched fields and protect areas impacted by natural disasters. Hear us, O oh God. You desire peace among nations and peoples. Guard our neighborhoods from hatred. Watch over police officers and firefighters and teach us to advocate for those who live in fear. Hear us, O oh God. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction, especially Dale, Beth, Lucille, Jim, Michelle, Barry, Joanne, Barb, and all others we now name. Sustain your living people with HIV, AIDS. Pro provide shelter for all who are unhoused and, re and release any who are unjustly imprisoned. Hear us, O God. You name each of us as your children. Guide our hospitality ministry to welcome all our education ministry to equip us for faithful living, and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. Hear us, O God. You send faithful people to proclaim freedom from bondage and to renew your church. Encourage us by the witness of the faithful departed so that we live into that same hope. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another, however you feel comfortable.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of field and forest, sea and sky. You are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ broken and poured out for you. Amen. Please be seated.
please rise as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world, through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Peace, share the harvest. Thanks. Thanks. 